Welcome back to the Friar Talk podcast and YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be recapping the Phillies, talking about the All-Star game, and then talking about Chris Paddock a little bit after his, well, he, it was a no decision, but he pitched really, really well. So we'll get into him in a little bit later. But let's start out. Let's just go back to the Sunday game. That's the positive game. And Isaac, I'll start with you, man. What was just your overall thoughts on this game and then the previous two games before that? Yeah, well, the Padres raked in this series. They put up 11 runs, six coming in the ninth. Uh, Webster Rivas had a home run. I always love to see the the more unknown names get the bombs. It's pretty cool. Um, Manny had five RBIs in that game. Fernando was hitting. Everyone had a base hit pretty much except for the people that came in to pinch hit, I believe. Uh, yeah, even Eric Cosmer had two hits, surprisingly. Um so overall, very good offensive production. Jerickson Profar went four for five. We were talking about it yesterday, how he he really wasn't hitting for power. You know, the slugging percentage isn't gonna isn't gonna show. There's nothing it's not gonna be a very impressive number, but overall his uh I mean he's raising his batting average. Um he's starting to find the holes, he's starting to put up some really good at bats, and it's he's always been putting up some really good at bats. It was just a matter of uh starting to find the holes, starting to make good contact. Um, cause he's, he has a good on base percentage. It's just, uh, the hits haven't been coming in, uh, that, that has definitely been overshadowed by, or overshadowed by his really, really, really bad defense lately. Um, you know, but overall good, good series for jerks and too, but overall good series for this whole team. You know, I know we lost a couple games, but, uh, they were nail biters. They were, they were off walk off. One of them was off a walk off. So can't really complain about it. You know, just hats off to the Phillies. Yeah, and then you know what? I just want to bring this up because I found it hilarious. They intentionally walked Machado twice with two outs just so that he couldn't hit again. And then the third guy just was walked him because he was wild. I thought that was kind of funny for the Sunday game. But yeah, everybody was hitting. It was unfortunate about the walk offs. It it happens. You just kind of have to slug them off and move on to the next game. And you know, they moved on to an 11 1. So. Uh, pitching looked good for the most part. Snell actually had a really good outing on the road compared to past outings, so I guess we can take this as a step in the right direction. Paddock looked really good outside of, what, two pitches, two mistakes that ended up costing him, what was it, three runs? So, you know what? It was one of his better outings. It's a good way to come back after that Diamondback game because, boy, that was that tough to watch. And you know what? He's showing that he's a legitimate three-pitch pitcher, and that's exactly what we're out of him right now. Yeah, and you go to the Saturday and then the Friday game. Friday, Paddock looked amazing. Um, yeah, he gave up three runs, but he pitched. It was seven innings, and he hadn't recorded an out up this point in the seventh inning. So that was a that was a big deal for him. Um, thought his, I mean, his curveball is really coming around. They he, did they call it a sword where he like, like a, when he swing when the guy checks swings and like tries to hold it hold it back. Um, that was an excellent curveball. So we we've seen his curveball kind of get going, and I think it was AJ Casavell wrote an article about just how he's actually developed this third pitch and how he's not a two pitch pitcher anymore. Um, it's a big deal. And, and we're going to have a full segment on him later this week, but that is a huge win. If he can be like that kind of guy for the Padres and start eating up a little bit of more innings too, just because right now he's, he has, I think the third most innings on the team. I, I'm pretty confident he has more than Blake Snell. Um, then going to the Saturday game, Darvish pitched probably one of Darvish's worst outings. It's hard to blame him though. Cause he's, leaving coming back on there's two, what two rain delays um it was a little bit weird that they brought him out for the sixth inning i i thought just because he was gone for so long i get bring him out for the fifth just like all right finish your inning you know you had a guy oh two with two outs um but it was weird that they brought him out again uh and it kind of came back to bite him a little bit though i think the the real story for those two games is still struggling to hit starters um you see a machado bomb and that was all the run support off the starters the first two games. And then yesterday, two Machado bombs. That's all the run support off the starters today. So Machado is really com pretty much completely carrying um, the offense right now. And it definitely had a, quite a few points. Um, but looking around, like Fam didn't have his best series. Funny that we just brought out like our apology fam video. Um, I expect him to bounce back though. He's His approach at the plate is phenomenal. Um, and we've seen that where some of these guys might start slumping a little bit. But like, for instance, like Jake Cronenworth, he was kind of slumping a little bit. And then you just see excellent at-bats, excellent approaches. And then on Sunday, he had a really good game. So some of these guys, it takes them a little while. They go into a little, a little bit of slumps. Uh, Grisham is kind of in one of those right now. Um, but hats off to Machado and Tatis for really carrying this offense when they don't quite have it. And I think it's going to start coming around a little bit more. Um, I tweeted out a tweet about Hosmer. basically said, 
if uh, if Nando wants to win a World Series, he's going to have to have a restraining order on Hosmer, which was a joke. I think a couple people took it seriously. I'm not obviously it's not going to happen. I thought it was funny. Um, and then I ended up coming back on Sunday and saying like, hey, that hit, hopefully it wakes up Hosmer because I mean, we're all rooting for him. We're all rooting for all these guys to succeed. I know a lot of people are getting frustrated, especially with Hosmer and Myers and Mateo. Chase Chase isn't standing for the Myers slander, but I, I know the fan base is frustrated. But I've also seen this stuff like, oh, these these fake fa- Padre fans getting upset. Being frustrated is different than not rooting for your team. Like we're still rooting for Hosmer. When he comes to the plate, we're not like, you better strike out Hosmer. I don't think there's anyone that's a Padres fan that's thinking that. People just want to see him succeed, and it's frustrating when he keeps rolling the ball over to second. So hopefully that's a that's a sign for things to come. Isaac, you were bringing up how Profar is finding the holes. That's how Hosmer hits too. Like he's not going to be ever be a big slugging guy, but if if he's hitting 280, 300, and he's finding the holes, that's a huge win. So hopefully he starts coming around. His numbers right now are way below his career average. So he's got to step it up, and I, I really hope he's able to because if you have him hitting six, seven and they do make a trade for an outfielder or whatever the case is, and you have him 6-7, he's actually able to start driving in some of these runs, that could be huge. So I, I really hope he steps up. But, Isaac, anything else you want to add? Yeah, you talk about Eric Hosmer. Um, yeah, all his numbers suck pretty bad right now, if we're being honest. Uh, there's no sugar coating it. I think everyone listening to this podcast has a higher war than him right now because um, he's in the negatives, I want to say, to be honest. Uh, it was like a negative 0.01 or negative 0.02 or 0.2 last time I checked. It's higher than that? It's like negative 0.8 or negative 0.9. Oh, yikes. Uh, I didn't expect it to be that bad. Um, wow. That is really bad. I don't know what, what – I don't really have much to say about that. That's just – we're paying the guy $144 million. We're not saying, like, you know, go up there and suck. We don't want to see repetitive ground balls to second base, like – we want to see him driving some runs. Yesterday he had two hits, and that's why we're like, oh, maybe he'll start coming around. Because other than ever since he came off the COVID list with Fernando, he's it's like Fernando skyrocketed up, and he just went way down. I just got one more thing to add about Hosmer. Darvish wouldn't have had as bad as an outing as he did if Eric Hosmer could catch pop fly in foul territory. That's all. And I know it was a weird play too, but Hosmer has definitely had his his difficulties with the uh, the pop flies. That's I think that's why people got really frustrated. Um, and that's when that's when Padres Twitter went crazy on Hosmer. I thought it was more I thought it was more funny than everything. Some people got really upset about it, um, but I thought it was just like I mean it was more like joking around. So I, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, but I mean overall this this series is doing good. I, I do really hope, and I think all of us I I know all of us want Hosmer to succeed. But it is frustrating when you're paying a guy that much money. And the thing I think that really frustrates people is the comments he's made in the past about, oh, I'm not going to change my approach. If And he said something like, if I don't change my approach and, and the, t- the team isn't happy with it, then they'll probably change my playing time. And that's not exactly what he said, but that's basically what he was trying to put across. And I think that, I mean, even Ryan Cohen, who we had on as a guest, who's probably the most positive Padres fan that I've ever met in my life. He even is like, all right, Enough's enough. Like, you got to make changes. And he, that was his point of that, what, what his issue with. And I think that should be everyone's issue right now. But I mean, like I said, if he's hitting six and seven, he's able to start driving in and hitting some gappers and doing stuff like that. That is such a big difference for this team. So hopefully he starts going. We've, you know, we've seen, we've seen who Fam is. We've seen who Cronenworth, Machado, Tatis, we, Grisham, we've like, we've seen that top five, those top five guys in the order. They're legit. So if they add a piece and they have six legit hitters at the top of the order. And, these guys at the bottom, like Profar, Hosmer, Myers, those guys start coming around. That can make so much difference. So that's kind of where I'm at. Good outings from Paddock. Uh, not the best outing from Darvish, but it's all right. Didn't really touch on Snell that much. I will say, didn't think they should have pulled him. Um, he had only thrown 81 pitches in four innings. I know he wasn't looking that great, but the bullpen's tax. We've talked about it. We want these guys to go longer. And that was one of his better road outings in quite some time. So hopefully that's a sign for things to come, but I think it's going to do it for this segment. So thanks everybody. And we will be back tomorrow.